Hey Internet, this is my giant contend. You may remember it from such riveting videos as Crashed Bike Frame and How to Shim Headset Bearings. Today, I want to tell you why it's a good gravel bike and why you should consider it. Stay tuned. So first, a bit of history about this bike. I bought it on eBay as a frame. It came to me frame, seat post, and rear axle. I put it together with a fork from a Cannondale Topstone, uh, full Tiagra 4700, Shimano RS wheels that I scrounged from another bike, and uh, WTB Byway tires. I'm running those tubeless on tubed wheels. So since you're here today, let's take a look at some of the features on this bike and see what makes it such a good gravel bike. Giant built this bike with all of the modern road bike trends in mind. It has 12 millimeter through axles, flat mount calipers, it's got a non-round or D-shaped seat post, and it has fully integrated cabling. Giant designed cable routing, especially around the head tube, to prevent gritty cables from rubbing the paint. The cables are set up such that they both run into the down tube through the headset. Now what this does is it gives you enough clearance so that when you rotate the bars, the cables never drag on the paint. In addition, Giant gave it plenty of tire clearance. These WTB tires are 34 millimeters wide and there's ample room to get my, get my fingers in between the fork and the tire, as well as on the rear between the fork and the stays. I could probably go up to like a 38 or maybe even a 40 on this bike before things got too tight. So if you do want to run larger tires, Giant has notched the back of the seat post to give additional clearance. So I mentioned these are 34s and you can see I can still get my my hand in between the tire and the frame. Tire clearance on this bike is fantastic. So this bike is set up for flat mount disc brake calipers, 140 in the rear, 160 in the front. I'm running on a 140 rotor in the rear. I haven't had any trouble with the 140. It's got good stopping power. I haven't had any trouble overheating it. And I tend to drag the rear brake when I'm riding on dirt trails or on gravel roads. The front does support the larger 160. Uh, given that it's flat mount, you would need special adapters to move, you know, to put anything larger. One limitation with that is the hydraulic hose comes out of the fork at a rather sharp angle with the 160. So if you went to a 180 or a 203, you would run into issues with using the internal routing for the hose. Unfortunately, there are a couple of cons with this bike that you should be aware of. One of the big drawbacks to this bike is the use of a defuse seat post. This is a D-shaped seat post that uses an integrated seat clamp. So if you want to upgrade this, you know, if you want a different seat post, if you want a longer one, a shorter one, whatever, you're limited to what Giant produces. And there's not a lot of options available for this. A common problem these have is the integrated seat post extends too high above the frame. What I did for mine is I took it, put it in the mill, and I took four millimeters off the top of the clamp. That way, it actually sits in there and sets flush. The use of Tiagra 4700 does have a downside for the front derailleur. This derailleur has quite a long arm and it actually will rub the tire if you're not careful. So I do have it aligned so that I have sufficient clearance in the big ring, but if you went with larger tires, this could be a problem. Switching to something more modern, like a 105 7000 series, with a much shorter throw would resolve that. So regarding sizing, uh, geometry, and fit, I'm 5'11", and this is a size medium large frame. It fits just about like a 56 on a road bike frame. I find this bike quite comfortable. I enjoy the geometry. It handles well, it rides well. Uh, so, you know, fit wise, if you're about my size, medium large is good. So tell me what you think of the paint scheme. I really like the look of the blood red frame with that metallic green fork. I don't know what it is about it. It's unique, it's different. So tell me what you think. You know, is this a good look? Should I repaint that fork? You don't care. You know, whatever. 
Leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think. So I'll admit, I, uh, I kind of thought the gravel bike trend was dumb. You know, we have good uh, cross-country mountain bikes. What do we need? What do we need to put the road bikes out there? But now that I've got one, and now that I've put the miles on it, I really do see the appeal. You know, I can set out on a ride and I can plan one that takes me down pavement, that takes me on gravel roads. And this bike, it'll handle all of that. So that's my giant contend road bike. Uh, this is the all road model. Uh, the geometry is good. It's got great tire clearance. The ride is comfortable and they're quite capable off road. And by off road, I mean gravel roads. Keep this bike in mind. If you're shopping for a gravel bike or you're looking for a good all around road bike, I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.